Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about my experience at Pepperdine University. I did film a brief video talking about it in, I want to say April, but I have gotten a few people commenting on that video asking other questions, asking for more information about it. People have reached out to me on Instagram with questions, so I just thought that it would be good to film another video a little bit more in depth about Pepperdine and my experience. So I want to start first with a little bit of background. So I am in graduate school. I completed my undergrad at University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and got a major in psychology and a minor in counseling. So I'm currently attending Pepperdine for the graduate school. Right now I'm working towards getting my Master of Arts in Clinical Psychology. So I am part of the Pepperdine Graduate School of Education and Psychology. I also want to emphasize that I am doing the online program. The last year of my undergrad was during COVID, so all of the classes were online, and I realized that the online format actually worked really well for me. So I wanted to find an online graduate program. I also really like the flexibility of not really being tied down to one area for two three years. However, it is hard to find an online program that is well established, well respected in the psychology community. And also when you're going for something like therapy or counseling, you have to pay attention to whether or not the program meets the requirements for licensure. Another big thing that I was concerned about is during your master's program, you have to do a practicum. And with a lot of the online programs I was finding, they had you look for the practicum site yourself. Whereas at Pepperdine, they have a specific placement team that helps locate a placement location for you. So well-established program, path for licensure, help with placement are all things that I was looking for. And those are all things that Pepperdine offered. So Pepperdine does have both an undergraduate program and a graduate program. I wanna reiterate that I am in the graduate program. So all of the information that I am giving you is in regards to that. I did not complete my undergrad there. Also, if you go to the Pepperdine website, you can find more specific information on the program and just the whole school in general. But I am just here to give you my opinion, my experience, um, things that I found from my research, really just whatever I think might be helpful for someone who is an incoming student or someone who's considering attending Pepperdine. Something that really drew me to Pepperdine is that they're ranked really high for their programs in psychology. Specifically for their online program, they are ranked number one for ROI for the Marriage and Family Therapy program. They're also ranked number three for best online college for ROI for master's and counseling programs. If you don't know what ROI is, that is return on investment. So obviously they're doing something right. There's also a lot of famous alumni, mostly like actors or performers that have attended Pepperdine, probably due to the fact that it's based in Malibu, California, and also it is known to be a more prestigious university. But let's talk a little bit about the degree I'm getting because that's what I know most about. So I am getting my Master's of Arts in Clinical Psychology. Now this is really important. I really wanna emphasize that this degree, if you are trying to get licensed, is only valid for certain states in order to meet the requirements for licensure. And those states are Alaska, Arizona, California, Delaware, Georgia, Idaho, Illinois, Maryland, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Oklahoma, Oregon, Tennessee, Texas, Virginia, Washington, D.C., and West Virginia. There's also two different kinds of licenses that you can get. So one is an MFT, which is a Marriage and Family Therapist license, and the second is an LPC, which is a Licensed Professional Counselor. Depending on your state, you may be eligible for a dual licensure program, but for many states, Pepperdine only qualifies for one or the other. Typically, if you're outside of California and you're in this program, it's an LPC, so a Licensed Professional counselor. I know that in California there's a bigger difference between the LPC and MFT. I believe that MFTs can do more, but in most of the other states they're pretty similar. I know that I live in Illinois and it's actually more common to have an LPC than it is to have an MFT here. So a little bit more about the program. So the shortest amount of time that they recommend you complete the program in is 27 months. That is the track that I'm on right now. They usually have you start out with six credits or two classes, and then after your first term, you can go up to three classes. But I will say that the classes are really time consuming, and if you're working full-time or even part-time, you might wanna stick with one or two classes, which I know will take you longer. I mean, everyone's different. Some people can handle that. I just 
can't. When you start the program, you'll talk with your advisor about your obligations outside of school, what you're looking for time-wise, just really how many classes you think that you can manage, and then they'll give you what's called a plan of study. I'll insert mine here. I know it's a little confusing, but that's all I was given. But as you can see, I started with the two classes and then moved on to the three, and then once you get into your practicum, they recommend that you only take one other class sometimes too if you have to on top of that because it can be a lot. Most practicum sites require you to do 15 to 20 hours a week so it's a lot on top of school and then if you're working. But I just wanted to show you guys this in case you're curious as to what kind of classes you would be taking in this program. I haven't taken all of these classes yet because I still have about a year left but some of my favorite classes that I've taken thus far are the Psych 600 Diagnosis and Treatment of Mental Health Disorders, Psych 612 Theories of Counseling and Psychotherapy, Psych 606 Interpersonal Skills and Group Therapy, and Psych 637 Techniques of Counseling and Psychotherapy. Now the reason that these are some of my favorite is because they, to me, were the most interesting. And besides 600, the other classes are a little bit less structured. It's really more of like study the material and then let's apply that to real world scenarios, which helps me learn way more than any of like the structured like do the work, take the exam, do the work, take the exam. And in these classes, I just had really good professors who encouraged, you know, open communication about a variety of things. These classes also give you an opportunity to explore yourself and your own beliefs, which I think is extremely important when you're going into the counseling field. Classes that I think were the most useful out of this program are Psych 600 Diagnosis and Treatment of Mental Health Disorders, Psych 606 Interpersonal Skills and Group Therapy, Psych 623 Ethics and Law for Mental Health Professionals, and Psych 661 Preparation for Practicum. As you can see, the first two classes overlap. I think that the diagnosis and treatment one is pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, that would be really important for this profession. And again, the interpersonal skills one just allows you to make a lot of reflection about yourself. And I think you learn a lot about how you handle situations and how you may be as a therapist. Ethics and law is always an extremely important one, especially if you're preparing for the licensure exam. As far as preparation for practicum, I'm currently in that class right now, and it really just offers a lot of support in regards to making a resume, a cover letter, learning how to interview, talking about what you might be doing at practicum sites. And it's good to hear from other people and experiences that they've had because you can learn from your peers as well. Another question I've gotten is, is the campus nice? Are the dorms nice? I'm sure they are. I've never been there. <laughs> I've only ever seen pictures of the campus and I really don't know much about the dorms because since I'm in graduate school, I probably wouldn't live there even if I was on campus. But from the pictures I've seen, it's beautiful, and that is actually where Zoe 101 was filmed, if you didn't know that. Fun fact. I think I will go to the campus eventually, maybe for graduation I'll go in person. But just keep in mind that the online program is the same price as the in-person program, which I think is kind of unfair considering that we're not reaping any of the benefits of being on the campus. But overall, I think that my favorite thing about going to Pepperdine is being able to do the online program and still being sure that the program is well established and well known. I will say that coming from a Wisconsin based school to a California based school, it is quite different. Personally, I just think that Wisconsin is a little bit better in that regard. It was obviously a lot less expensive and I just felt more seen and heard as a student than I do at Pepperdine. Also things like registration, tuition raises, the website as to like where you do your work or turn in assignments was a lot more structured at Wisconsin-based schools than it is at California-based schools. I shouldn't say all California-based schools, I mean just Pepperdine because that's the only one I've had an experience with, but I would definitely say that I preferred my experience at my undergrad over my experience here. But it is hard to compare because one was in person and one was online, so that offers like a ton of different variables that you have to throw in there. Now probably one of the biggest questions that I've got about going to Pepperdine is, is it worth it? I think that one of people's biggest hesitations, and I know one of my biggest hesitations, is the cost of it, so let's talk a little bit about that. Pepperdine is a private university, and in the US, private universities are insanely expensive. No, like seriously, ridiculously high. And I think that the cost of Pepperdine is even higher than that, at least for the graduate programs. The price is dependent on which graduate school you are attending. So for my program, it is $1,770 per credit, 
and you're required to take 68 credits to complete the program, which means that the total program is $120,360. I know, it's insane. You could almost buy a house with how high tuition is. But now let's look into how much you'll make after you graduate. Now, I knew that going into therapy, you don't really make a lot of money, unless let's say you have a doctorate, or if you open a private practice, that kind of gives you opportunity for a higher salary increase. And according to Pepperdine, jobs in individual and family services is set to grow 23%. However, the average salary for a private practice licensed marriage and family therapist in the state of California is $50,948. So when you look at that and then you look at how much debt you're in compared to even just the extremely high cost of living in California, doesn't seem too great. I couldn't find any statistics through Pepperdine on how much graduate students make after they graduate from this program specifically, but I did find on College Factual, take that as you will, that the average graduate from the Master's in Clinical Psychology program from Pepperdine makes about $47,307 a year. The average for a Master's in Clinical Psychology is around $44,962, but still doesn't seem on par with how much you were paying for tuition. So overall, the cost is just a huge negative. One of the positives about going to this program though is really just the connections that I've made, especially because the program's online, I've gotten to connect with people all over the US, which is beneficial if I ever want to you know, move around to different states. And even though most of the professors are based out of California, not all of them are. So you even have like professors in other states to maybe help get you jobs or write you recommendation letters, all of that. Also, Pepperdine is a pretty good school for psychology. So going to a school that just has that reputation is a positive as well. And I'm not gonna lie, I think that going to a top school for your program does help you get your foot in the door. When I tell people in the psychology field that I'm going here for my master's, they are very impressed with that. That being said, I don't think that you you need to go to a top school in order to be successful. I think I would have been happy going to a less expensive school and getting out of school debt free or just with even half the amount of debt that I have now. So ultimately, if I'm answering the question, was it worth it? For me, I would say probably not. The reason I'm still in the program is because I only have a year left, so I'm kind of too far in, but I think if I would have realized a lot of the stuff earlier, I probably would have transferred schools. That being said, everyone is different. Everyone has different things that are important to them. And so for you, if you think the positives outweigh the negatives, go for it. There's a lot more that I could go into about the school and maybe I'll film a part two of this video if you guys are interested. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment. I'll also put the link to my Instagram down there if you want to DM me with any questions that you have. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see future videos, please hit that subscribe button below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.